No, Tommy Khan, um, Tommy Hennig's great duration. She do this new uh, freak new one. We'll meet in Milton. I guess on and then do this now. We we'll meet in Milton. Tell she born her Portish grave. Charlie Lennon, the Mahish Mohori, the Trish, and I put on a Kahvi, short and a Kahvi, her in the Blinta. I guess Captain McGrath, she run a contest new Akrish and Count Chin. I guess she had a sudden tittle on on blue disc. I thought I could kill. Oh, so her ear her come next hour air on a mastery of other encounter Chin. So I'm making showing me the K track on on blue disc three. Port. We meet in Milltown and Tarnakown is Kelly Ahane, James Kelly and um, the Sloping Meadows, August and Kelly and Don Mayo, Breed, and Don Shishon, Uncle JC Telty, August uh, Ellis is in Tanamer and Kelly. August and, and, and Kelly come, Charlie, you shouldn't come uh, in an order there. Yeah, we are in Mahish Moria, Hammer Hashin, Vulgar, Kelly, Milton Sock and Tomer Father, this Shinkasa Hagan Hagan Tiddle. Okay, all right, then Raglish.
Listen, it's also a volume on piece of shot occur or score on public good and a good in the day her fear goil, fear kiriuk, dinner, macant, dinner dealish, dinner, canasta vion, okay? So, a good in a mirish, okay? Uh, listen, welcome here, Breed and Seamus, okay? Uh, it's great to have you here eventually because I don't know which one of you dragged each other or was it the two of you in, in the comfort of a pair that brought you here, so I'm glad to have you here anyway. Um, Breed, will you tell us something about your connection with this young fellow and your connection with Milltown in general? I suppose maybe 10 or 15 years ago, Seamus' father, Morris Shoroka, um, asked me to play at the concert. But maybe he's gone back 20 years, I don't even know, Seamus, um, to play um, at the concert with Seamus. I'm sure I know, I know Seamus all my life, and I know Morris and Una and Mara, the whole family. But um, we, we we played together at that concert, and we've been playing together since then. You know, once a year, and a, a good good bit in between <laughs> during the year as well. But um, so we, we love the same music, we, sure. we have the same influences, and I love the whistle and the pipes together. And I particularly like playing with the flat set. We playing Willie sure. Tensy's pipes there. You're playing and in, sure in I B, is it? Willie Tensy and sure, yeah, yeah, the B set. There's just such a lovely sound. Oh, beautiful, like very the, rich. The low whistle then to go with it. Sure. And, um, sure um, we love, we love yeah. them together. And okay. It just comes out naturally. And Seamus Breed said there that those pipes are actually owned by Willie Clancy and uh, your father's connection with Willie as well. Would you tell us how you came by the pipes? Well, it was my father. She bought them off Doreen after after Willie died. He had a couple of sets and she was prepared to let these go, I suppose. And he had a couple. He picked them up in London in the fifties, but it's not it's not one hundred percent certain how he got them. But he, he got, I think it was definitely he got them in London in that period. And made by whom? They're coined there, so they be from the early nineteenth century, the, uh, probably Morris coin set. But again, like they um. The Chantran vein here was made by a, a man um, who was very much alive and well today, a man called Bill Henneman, who lives out in, um, from Seattle, but he lives out in Scaries in North County. Oh, right. It's because the Chantra that came with it wasn't an original, you could tell, uh, so they, they were kind of made to match, so I got this made. It sure. Did better with the rest of it. Like. And listen, did, did Murish buy this with, with, with the master plan, the 15 year master plan, that you would play it eventually, or were you playing pipes when, when he bought born, it? Well, I wasn't even born when he bought <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> what the plan was. So. Like, he might have been tempted to play it himself sometime. <laughs> All right. And did he ever make an attempt at playing pipes? I don't know, or any music, no. Did, yeah. Did, no, he didn't, funny, he never made any attempt at any stage. Like He, he always loved the singing. It was his, yeah. And he was always very fond of the traditional singing. Obviously. Sure. And how did he get you involved in the pipes? And was it just you're playing this now, or else? Uh, well, no, I knew it was there, but there was a pipe maker and Nick Adams. Uh, he's still around, but he was there at the time, mm. and he was he was making pipes and starting people off on pipes. So there was actually a pipe maker and teacher right in the centre of Milton, living up the sure. lane at the time. Right. So, and he was playing a lot of breed, I think Nick over the over the yeah. two gigs together. So he started off a lot of local people. All right. Pipes, it was just convenient, like that. Yeah. Okay. And listen, Breed, who decided on the pair of you recording an album, or was it was it just a, a, an epiphany, a moment on the road to Damascus? You decided uh, the time was right. <laughs> I got a text from Seamus saying, would, would I play a couple of tracks? And I thought it was like before I was a guest on his album, uh, his last album on Bokel Trotcha. Right. So I said, grind. And out in the time I found out it was a kind of a, a full scale joke. <laughs> 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 with, with, with a, sing, a singer or two. But, uh, we, All right. We've, um, we've met Matty Joe Hamish. You've met Joe Hamish, yeah, brilliant. Yeah. Well, so and what's Matty's connection with the two of you? Is it through Milltown, through your father? Or uh, well, you know, my father, of course, would have always loved the Shannon singing yeah. and he would brought as many as he could to sure. Milltown. But he always stayed with Breed, by coincidence, mm. Matty, over the years. Mm. In, right. In the, over the week, like he was stayed at Breed's house. Sure. So he would have been there, got plenty of songs off him and tunes and everything over there. Yeah, we loved the influence of the, the Shano singing and, and the music and just the whole thing. It brought it all together. It was kind of a, a very sentimental kind of a CD when we started at it. Right. We, we started going back over tunes that we liked and sure. tunes that we liked because of people that played them and mm. just wrote, um, a lot of the, the, the tunes would have been the old Jonah Prehan and, and um, Willie Clancy and ones from JC and just. It just kind of all happened very naturally because Seamus would pick one tune and I put another tune with it. 
But a lot of it was uh, tunes that we had played together too over the years at the concerts. Sure. It, they were already there as sets, and we added a few more bits and pieces mm. into it as well. <laughs> and we couldn't breathe at this one or we did one solo album, one with the family, and another sure. one with the. So that was three CDs worth of tunes gone. So, wow. so, we, <laughs> so you were trawling. <laughs> so we, had to, we, had to, we had to dig a bit deeper then, so we kind of came up with some yeah. interesting ones. And by doing, by having to do that, I suppose you, yeah. we were made to dig a bit deeper, so we found. But isn't it a great rich combination as well? I, I know it's in B, the pipes are in B, and you, you've got your, your, your Suzetta there in B as well, but there's a great richness attached to... I've yeah. never heard a combination of, of whistle and, and pipe. <laughs> And I didn't, I didn't like the idea of playing a, a plastic whistle with, with <laughs> such lovely pipes. Yeah. But you know, we tried another whistle or two, and still they, they recorded it recorded better. So we stuck with this. I was going to hide the, I won't say hide it for the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Put an antique look in it. <laughs> and how long did it take this? I mean, from start to finish recording, th did it just gel out and over and congeal into something really nice, or did you work your backsides off at it? Yeah. Was it one take well, or two most takes? We recording done in a couple of, in a day and a half. Really, yeah. most of playing done. Then we did the mastering and you know bits of tuning with it and after the usual studio. Work. Right, sure. And the songs and then had to be put in and blended yeah. after that. But we most of the tunes done a day and a half. Really. Yeah, we met one day um, during the midterm and we um, just played a load of tunes that we thought were nice together and we stuck with most of those. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. God, it's 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 turned out into an unbelievably. Mm -hmm. Kind of a rich and wholesome album. I, I love. It. I could listen to this all day. Now I'm just sorry the the interview and the music is coming to an end. <laughs> but listen, I really appreciate you being here and Thanks, thrilled. And I said in memory of your father because he was a great friend of ours here in in Custis and a, a great kind of a teacher of mine to try and get some Irish. The blast of Kermit could go ahead. Yeah, no, and no, I appreciate <laughs> that. And <laughs> <laughs> listen, thanks again for coming, lads. You're very welcome. Thanks, John.